Welcome everyone and welcome to Two Dad Cycling. My name is Heath. I live in Melbourne, Australia and my good buddy Nick from Portland, Oregon over there. And we're going to chat about what it's like trying to be a dad and fit in what can be a time consuming sport that is cycling. How are you, Nick? I'm doing good. How are you doing, bud? Yeah, good. Sunday afternoon for me. Saturday night for you. It is. Yeah, what a way to spend Saturday night. Stop talking to me. Hey, absolutely. It could be worse. <laughs> um, like some of the things that, that are around our, what we have in common has brought us into this, you know, because like if I was to go into it, like, and I know like how we just got to know each other is via Instagram. We've never met and it's weird. And yet, yeah, you know, we've got quite a good friendship. We talk a lot about things. We have a lot of things in common, you know, our, our obviously cycling. Yeah. But our love of custom kits, our love of shoes, our love of, you know, yeah. the, the concept of looking good on the bike, looking good, feeling good. Um, but then you get down to like, you know, married with two kids, used to race motorbikes. Yeah. There's a certain number of things that we have outside what is connecting us right now that has had us share some experiences in the past yeah. that, you know, sort of bonded us together to start sharing about what is, and what is the biggest concept for me and why I think two dad cycling for me and the, uh, is important for others to hear about is me too. You and I would talk about stuff and I'd say, ah, oh, geez, it's hard to sometimes fit in the rides. Me too. You know, sometimes, oh, I try to jump on Zwift so that I can just squeeze in a quick ride while I'm minding the kids. Me too. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'll try to get up early in the morning, try to go for a ride just to fit one in before everyone gets out of bed. Me too. I mean, for what was the connection points for you? Like, you know, a dad on the other side of the world and yet we had so much in common. What did you think? Yeah, definitely that that deeper level of friendship just continued down the path from something very surface of looks to a, a better understanding of commonality that where well, we both have two kids, we're both married, we both enjoy the same passions. And so it's, it's much easier to have that understanding and, and then having discussions like this where what do you do in order to maintain being able to, to keep your endurance on the bike? And what do I do as a full-time dad? I think there's so many people around the world who are dealing with the same issues of trying to manage how to find that time to build your endurance, whether you're racing or you're a weekend warrior. Having those discussions of this is how I do it, this is how you do it, could help give me some ideas and, and vice versa. This recent um, isolation phase that we're in and, and having a trainer, which I seem to prefer to do in the afternoon, because I get up early and start work about 7 a.m., which is in, in my study in my house. So like I get up at 6.30, which is an hour later than what I used to do. And what I used to do to get on my ride again was I'd get up at 5.30 and I'd be back home by you know, 7.30 most times and 8.30 on a day where there was a long ride, depending on where I had to be at nine. So that getting up early is really something that, that worked super well for riding. It wasn't super great for spending time with the wife when I went to bed at nine o'clock every night, which was only an hour after the kids. Um, there is some quality time to be spent when you're not in bed. Yep. But that's, that was my biggest thing. I just get up and ride. I mean, I was doing five, six days a week, even if you only do three or four. You've still got a balance of time to spend with loved ones at home, with loved ones on the weekend. And then how you fit it in, that, that can be up to you. I mean, I don't know about you, but I know you use Swift to fit it in. Yeah, um, in, in order to get any any sort of a decent ride, you're gonna be gone for three hours. And, and I think any man or woman for that matter, who is married and has a family, getting three hours of free time on a weekend is not always easy to come by. I take advantage of those opportunities whenever I can, but that's where Zwift plays a huge part for me during the week and even on the weekends. It could be 80 degrees out here, uh, completely dry, beautiful day, but if my schedule doesn't allow me that extra time, then Zwift allows me that maybe that one hour window to where I can go in and, and do a full Zwift workout or just just spin to keep my legs spinning but i still get in that endurance and being able to manage my family time and still get what i need during the week uh, whilst I, I i think that in an ideal world i would love to have uh rollers like you do um i i i had been thinking about having a trainer for a long time and i had taken the piss a bit out of having a trainer and i had sort of 
been saying nobody gets better bike handling skills by being on an indoor trainer yeah um had had come up a lot uh, so i had to eat my words a little bit when i found it was quite handy and just I, to discuss the differences here is for the longest time you still were able to maintain that 250 kilometers a week without the need of any indoor training and that sacrifice came from getting up early in the morning or riding on the weekends and and coordinating that with your family yeah for me i don't have the ability to ride to work i don't have the ability to commute or anything like that so my riding is purely based on when i have the time to get out and so that's where zwift really plays a, a huge part for me where it's interesting to hear from someone else who realistically has the same family dynamic with with two kids and a wife and a career yet you were still able to manage getting in the time without any kind of indoor trainer that's that boggles my mind i tell you something that has been a real recent learning too that recently i changed jobs having a career that is now increased in sig significantly in importance means that it's been harder to fit the riding in so before i had the ability to potentially take an hour a day from work whereas now when i take an hour a day because work's already taking an hour or two extra any time i take now is a family deficit i think i think that's also important to remember that just because we both have full-time jobs our responsibilities and focus and attention during the workday are different so to just compare our lives and say this is how you do a and this is how you do b there's probably a c and a d and an e in there somewhere where somebody's trying to figure out you know how do i how do i how do i find the time to do that yeah. in this that you, you you kind of bring it up with a balance around work and, and 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 what you can justify how you can break your time down it made me think about the balance we have at home and the negotiation we have at home because one of the things for me that was really significant and as really significant is that cycling for me is my hobby well i probably don't think about the kits as my hobby um the time out on the road is a mental release so it's my mental health it's obviously my physical health mm -hmm. and it's my passion as well for some of the racing and the things for the competitive side of it that that brings out of me you know if i played squash on a weeknight which i used to do cricket on the weekends and went to the gym twice two or three times a week i found that if i combined all those things into cycling it took up the same amount of time mm -hmm. But the perception at home when all of that time was spent cycling was more difficult because it's ah oh, so many hours cycling. Whereas if I go, well, Tuesday night I played squash and Saturday I played cricket, I just don't think that that tension that can happen in some households would have been the same. The stress of two young kids for me was enormous and I, I rode more at a time I needed to be spending time at home trying to cope with how and where and riding off that stress that was really not positive for me, even though I loved being a dad and still do that time, um, that resentment that can build in the house, the cycling wife that I've heard. Because yeah. I know there are some guys who push that to the limit. So yeah. finding that balance is obviously important in every house, right? Yeah, um, half, halfway around the world, it's, it's the same situation in my household. It's just, it's, I think it's just respecting your family enough to understand that you schedule in your time but then when you get back home, it's needing to refocus that time back on the family. I think that's, that is an important thing too, because I, I know years ago, training and levels of training and a TSS score and all that was far more important. Now I came home from a four hour ride, absolutely shagged. Right. I, I, I rarely had enough energy to do anything in the afternoon to potentially watch the Lakers play. Um, and that was also not conducive to, you know, spending time with the kids or the wife. So there is a balance. And I think that, that some part of the, my realization to take it a little bit less seriously because of having some achieved some goals, but realizing in the final scheme of things in the world, it, it, I, I was still a hoax. That's essentially what it was, you know, like I, I was well, not even some local uh, age group medals were not going to convince anyone that I was anything any better than just a local hoax. You know, you're never going to know. No, I was never going to make it into A grade or, or Cat 1 personally. Right. So I was, yeah, that, that bit of perspective for me dialed it back a bit, which has also a negative effect on your endurance and your training and your capability. But a balance that allowed me to go, you know what, I just can't ride today. I can't be obsessive about it. So what? I'm going to miss 50Ks this week. Right. That's the one place. I think, I think it goes back to 
kind of touching on on the the balance aspect of it, you know, and I think it's important as we get older and as we develop in our families and just in our lives that we adapt to the current situation, right? So people that watch this, they, they may be single, you know, they get home from work and, th- and they're off doing 160 Guys, kilometers every to. day. You know, there's, yeah. there's people out there that do that. God bless them. You know, I, I wish I could do that, but that's not my current situation. That same person who's single four years from now, you know, maybe they're married and now they've got a kid. That 160 kilometers that they're riding just got cut down to whatever they can try to fit in into their schedule. So understanding and being realistic with what your goals are combined with having a balance of your current situation and what you have to deal with. Yeah, and understanding understanding your world. Like for me, there's a balance between if you if you're single and you can ride seven days a week, go do it if that's what rocks your boat, right? No one's gonna think anything ill of you. Yeah. And if you can be super competitive and that's what you how you want to spend your life, go do. The pros and cons of different phases of life, you know, like having kids young versus having kids older. So I had some mates who had some older kids. Like I've got mates who've got kids that are 20, which is you know 12 years older than my kids. And some of them would say when I was, you know, in my thirties and I was, I had a good job and, and I was able to buy toys and I had a motorbike and a boat and, you know, I was doing different things. Like we talked about the, the motorbike racing, whatever. And they're like, oh, I'm quite jealous. And I was like, well, if you want to hand over your wife and kids, mate, I'll, uh, I'll take them and you can go and take my motorbike and my boat right. and off you go. And not one of them said yes. And I know why, because like, it's so important. It's so great to have a family and I love having, I love being a dad. I genuinely love being a dad. So I'm not going to give that up, but I, you have to know there's a price. Yeah. There are pros and cons because sometimes the kids shit you to tears and sometimes all you want to do is go out and ride the bike or sometimes I've been out and I've had a beautiful morning. I've enjoyed myself. I've had a chat, I've had exercise. I feel mentally refreshed and I come home yeah. and you know, my wife's screaming at the kids because they've all had a horrible morning and I have walked into what could be considered not the most positive environment to walk back into, but that's right. life. The other thing that I think uh, about finding time to ride and what we're trying to talk about today, I don't have a hobby like you do. Your photography, because you are brilliant, I love your work, Thank and you. there is no doubt in my mind as to why someone like Bond picks you up and says, please take care of us, because uh, we have fantastic <laughs> shoes and you, ta- you have fantastic picture-taking abilities. But that takes up time, right? So one of the things that I know I haven't done in years past, probably for the last 10 years, if I've had spare time, it revolves around cycling. Mm -hmm. That was my other thing about another hobby. So I don't know whether you wanted to add something in around having another hobby, because whilst you seem to have combined them, and I think that's great, like I would love to have your photography skills, but I don't have the time to invest right now into being becoming a better photographer. So I do my best. I try to make it about the content, and a lot of what I a lot of what I put onto Instagram is because of what I'm wearing. Because I was kid obsessed, uh, the, the tiny details, the matchy matchy, the stripe on the socks, the logo on the cap, the armbands on a jersey, the the different coloured chile, the logos on the mix, all those things that match up. And I've always just tried to show that. So it hasn't been about the quality of the photography per se. Yeah. Whereas when I look at your stuff and some of the other guys we follow, you know, the quality of the photography is just next level. I, I, I can't even begin. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I feel like in, in most cases I'm faking it till I make it type thing. And uh, I, I don't I'm, think I'm, you're faking it. I think the evidence is there. I think we are <laughs> seeing the evidence. You, my friend, might be able to see where you could have done better. I'm just seeing photos that are 10 times, 100 times better than my own. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, I, th- I think just like in the world of cycling, you know, there's there's so many things that, you know, I, I look at what I have, I look at my own abilities, and I'm still envious of so many other people and their abilities and what they can achieve. And so that's, that is another thing that I am trying to manage my time with learning the photography and, and now, you know, both of us starting our YouTube channels. Um, I'm, I'm trying to dip into the whole new world of, you know, video media. And, and that's been uh, time sucking as well, uh, which, which has definitely been felt in my household. Um, you know, you and I have had discussions in the past 
uh, just this week where I've had to postpone because I've had to, my head has been in other places so much that I've had to sacrifice uh, in other locations. You might, you can pay a coach, but most of us aren't gonna pay a coach. So that's right. why I did the tip from getting stronger. Consistency, make sure you have a hard ride, make sure you have an easy ride. You've got to find some balance in it. Like just having some thinking that can overlay what you can fit in so that you know, well, last week I did a whole bunch of easy rides. I'm gonna to have to do a couple of hard ones if I wanna get better. Last week I did a bunch of hard ones. I need a break. I'm going to have some social, easy coffee rides. Right. Um, and having that as an element in your brain, whilst it's not a training session where you have to go and sit at 300 watts for eight minutes, have five minutes off, and then sit at 300 watts again for another eight minutes, like that stuff drives me insane. You get better, there's no doubt. But mostly you have to do it on your own, and it's not fun. So yeah. I ended up doing it. <laughs> yeah. I you know, I, I think uh, I think everything that we're discussing, it comes down to that balance, right? But while we still need to push ourselves to become better, there are those moments where, you know, that pain is temporary mentality and just kind of doing it so you can see the benefits. There also needs to be that I do it because it's fun. You know? Yeah, 100%. I mean, and I've got mates who love the pain. Yeah. They'll get out and they'll suffer. They just love it. And I go, you're sick, dude. This is, <laughs> this is this is so hard today. It was borderline fun, that Me Too concept. I really want to encourage dads who are listening to this, you know, make some comments. Give us some stuff to talk about. Ask some questions that both of us can answer from opposite sides of the world and see how it goes, you know? I mean, whilst we've talked so much about the things we have in common, I think sometimes our answers to these questions are quite opposite purely because of your own individual circumstances, right? We have an overarching similarity and and the positiveness that's coming in our relationship that's great. But sometimes our answers are just different, you know? Like for me, where you go, no, nah, I'm happy. I'll just jump on Zwift, I quite like it. Me, I go, well, I, if my preference, I will just jump outside right. and not. So just how, the, how we answer things is going to be, hopefully provide a little bit of the a little bit of an idea of how it could work for you, even if it's not perfectly right on the me too. The me too is the finding the hour. How you find your hour is up to you. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think if people do get involved and they leave the questions and the comments, um, you know, it, it could help not, not be an answer for you or me, but you know, for somebody else who could be watching this, you know, get maybe a yeah. third perspective. Um, so, yeah. you know, I, I, I truly hope that us having this discussion uh, and, and people that choose to tune into this, uh, that they do get involved. And I, I would love to hear how other people, you know, manage their time and, and give their explanation as to how their Me Too looks. Taken in thinking about how the channel and how my Instagram and, and specifically the hoax tips goes, I'm not thinking that I know it all. I right. certainly don't know it all. I'm not the smartest bloke around and I certainly don't know everything and I don't want to appear that way. It's just about some things, you know, by the time you get a bit older and you've been doing things for a while, you learn some stuff and yeah. you learn some stuff that's hopefully useful to a majority or some you know is useful to the majority and some of it's just, well, might be useful to you, it might not, but I hope they've enjoyed, you know, listening and having a chat and feeling like part of that me too. That's 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 where it's at. You know, I think um, I think it's very important for us to both admit publicly that neither you or I are experts in anything, right? We, like you said, we've we've just got enough experience in either making the wrong mistakes and learning from them, or we just have a, a way to do something that does work for us, and we are looking to share that because I've been I've been super surprised that the content in some of my YouTube channel has uh, some has brought some really good feedback as to, I kind of was hesitant to make any of the content that I did, but afterwards hearing people say like, me too, you know? Oh yeah. my gosh, like I, I, I thought I was the only one that my, my toes would go numb while I rode, or I thought I was the only one that was having trouble with this, this, and this. Yeah. Whether it's a big, big issue or a small issue, there's going to be a ton of people that are experiencing the same thing. Yeah. And I think that's it. I think genuinely, no matter what you're experiencing, it's highly likely you aren't the only one. Right. There's always going to be someone who says me too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, we're, we're just getting started with this. Uh, hopefully those of you that are tuning in, 
you guys enjoyed this and we'd love some direction and some topics for you guys to, that you guys want to hear uh, that we could help share and, and shine some light on. And uh, the thumbs up if you like the video, give, give us that feedback because we are, we are anxious to learn and, and see where this progresses. So, so just before we go, we can't leave without a dad joke. Why can't the bicycle stand up on its own? Because it's too tired. <laughs> that that might be a, a joke that only dads would understand. That's quite the dad joke. And if you've got kids like mine, they're still going to find it funny. So it's awesome. They're not old enough to hate me yet. So That's perfect. perfect. <laughs> let's, uh, let's sign off there. That's been awesome, dude. So good to enjoy the chat. I've loved it. Yeah. Everyone tuning in. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time.